Hello friend and welcome to part two of this little two-part video series where I am walking through a case study from my time at Wealthsimple. If you haven't watched part one yet, I highly recommend going and doing that somewhere over here. It will be linked. That gives you an overview and an introduction into this entire project. In that, I walk through the sort of presentation that outlines everything from the context of the project, a little bit of customer insights, a little bit about our principles that we created, the sort of introduction to the components that we proposed and a little bit about the impact as well. So highly recommend checking that out first as a precursor to this video because in this one it's going to be a little bit more technical. We're just going to dive straight into the Figma and look at how I created and set up these components, how I documented all of the documentation for the design components that then belonged as part of our larger design system. So yeah, let's get into the video today. Okay, here we are in Figma and this was the working file for this project. I just walked you through this presentation that is also in this file and now I want to walk you through the kind of final designs or like the components that I ended up creating. Let's start with banners. So here I have the banner components and you can see here that there is a link that says find in patchwork. Patchwork is the name of the design system at Wealthsimple. So even though this was in its own unified messaging project file, we have a different figure file for our design system and so these were actually created in that design system and they're like kind of belong there that's sort of their home and I sort of copied them over into this file so that anyone who comes into this file can kind of see the final final work. So what I ended up doing is I created this section it's basically just a group of components that are grouped together via auto layout. And you can see here all of the different kind of variants or like states of this informational component. I don't know how many there is here, maybe like 10 or so. And if I tap on one, you can see here on the right hand side in Figma that you can sort of configure this component. So in this case, this is an informational component and there's no title, it's not dismissible and there's no CTA. But of course, if I started to change this, it would sort of influence that component there. So I have here the informational components and then on the right hand side, I have some examples of how this component should appear in the app itself. And then I also have the sort of warning state of this component. So again, all of the different states for warning, it's basically, it's, it's the same except just like a different color essentially is the only difference. And then again, like examples of how it should uh, show in the app as well. Something else I also did was started to create design system documentation for this component. So if I zoom in here, here to this. This is kind of a, I don't know, I guess like one big card that has all of the design system documentation for this particular component. So walking through this, there is like, you know, a bit of an introduction here. We're talking about the banner. It starts with a little bit of information about like, you know, API and things like that. And like, who's the design point of contact? It was me, surprise, surprise. And then it goes into the anatomy. So how is this component actually made up? What are the sort of individual elements that live within this component? So that as I'm referring to these things throughout documentation or like even in Slack or whatever, it's clear what I'm referring to and what I'm actually talking about. So I find this section really, really handy. It's also handy for the engineers to see like how to build the components. So actually this is like a little bit of an ironic mistake. Like this CTA should like be able to go all the way to the end here. Like if we wanted to put a really long CTA, I wouldn't recommend it. Here like you can see that the description text like goes all the way to this edge. Like it doesn't line up with the banner title. It can wrap underneath the dismiss icon. So I do think it's helpful for the engineers to kind of see the bounding containers of the elements inside of the component because you don't really see that as much in just the component itself unless of course you're like clicking into it and seeing like the text box but you know let's let's make it easier for our engineers am I right okay so then there's the variance the information state the alert state like when should these different states be used a little bit of usage like when should we use a banner versus not using a banner just like examples of when they shouldn't be used and then going into a bit of detail around the behavior some do's and don'ts it's always fun to like make 
like the don'ts, like breaking your design intentionally is always very fun. And yeah, so just a little bit here around the behavior, the interaction, some notes around stacking as well, some content guidelines, and then it ends with examples. So I wanted to include as many examples as I could for teams to be able to come in and like see their, not their exact use case, but like how they could apply these use cases to their team. So yeah, some examples here in, in particular, like how banners would stack in the app, examples like with a CTA, without a CTA. Yeah, so ending on examples. And like this was a documentation that I handed over to the engineers and they loved it. So if you're in a position where you have to create some documentation for your components for the first time, I don't know, this structure worked for me. Feel free to use it uh, if, if you think it will work for you and your team as well. Next, marketing cards. So again, it's like the same layout for all these components. So I have the components on the left and then the examples on the right. And so here I've got the sort of light mode and the dark mode components, the full width and the half width and all of the different color themes that we had as well for the app. And, you know, similar if I go into one of these components, you can see what is configurable. I could change the color of this if I wanted to. Oh no, what color was it? I think it was fig. No, aubergine. Aubergine. Okay. Teams could also change the graphics. So like the actual illustration in our case that is being used, we had a component. It's like an embedded component. So like it lives within this component um, where teams could then just kind of swap out the, the graphic really, really easily. Similar for this component. One thing we talked about was for marketing cards that linked inside the app. We wanted to have this like arrow button because it takes you somewhere else in the app versus if it is taking you outside of the app, then we wanted to indicate that with a different icon. So in our patchwork design system Figma, we also had this element here as a component where you could basically switch between is it linking in app or is it linking out of app and it would change the icon respectfully. Okay and then over here on the right again some different examples and I wanted to include both the light and the dark mode and I just had a comment here open with Figma mirror like I don't know I find that we spend often so much time reviewing mobile designs in a desktop context right like you've got Figma open on your computer you're looking at it on a big screen and like sometimes I'll get feedback like oh this feels too big or this feels too small and I'm like have you opened it on your phone and they're like oh no good point because once you open it and interact with it on your phone it can feel so different than when looking at it on a desktop context so yeah I always try to encourage folks on my team when reviewing designs to actually you know open it up on their phone with Figma mirror and and review it that way because I feel like you get a much it's just much more accurate you get a more realistic interpretation of what the design is actually going to look like. And so, you know, with these marketing cards, for example, I wanted to encourage that. And I believe I also set these carousels up to scroll so you can actually scroll through the carousel as well on your phone to see them, which is pretty cool. So then I also had snack bars, which were really fun. Again, like the components on the left, the examples on the right. What was like interesting about the snack bars was we were figuring out like, okay, you know, we got a lot of black going on. If a snack bar were to come up over a CTA because one of our guidelines was snack bar should come up at the bottom of the screen. And like if there were fixed buttons, it would come above it. But if there was like a, I don't know if I have a good example of it, but if there was a CTA in the screen content, like as you're scrolling, it scrolls with the content. It's like embedded on the screen. We wanted to consider that use case too, right? Where a snack bar might show over top of that button. So in order to account for that, we ended up adding this really subtle kind of white border around the snack bar so that if it were to like appear over top of an embedded CTA, you know, you'd still be able to see that they are two different elements. And we added that for the failure state as well. Hopefully you can see there is a white stroke around this component. And similar, if I tap on the component, you know, you can switch between the positive and negative really, really easily. And I also included a interaction prototype. Actually, let me load it up uh, because for snack bars, there's a bit of interaction, right? They like pop up at the bottom, they go back down. And the engineers were asking me, what does the interaction look like? Like, you know, how should we build this? And so I built this prototype. Like if I tap on the star, you'll see that the component comes up and it's going to auto dismiss after a few seconds there. If I do it again, I can also like 
tap on close to auto dismiss it. And I think this interaction was important to prototype out. If I do it again, watch, you'll see how the snack bar comes up from behind the fixed CTAs at the bottom of the screen, right? It's not like coming over this buy and sell. It's like popping up and down behind. So just small details like that, that engineers are gonna eventually ask you questions about. They should be really thoughtfully designed. So yeah, I, I made sure that I had this prototype. And again, I had preview in prototype mode and a link to actually open the prototype and sort of some prototype instructions like what to do when you open in the prototype. So in this case, tap on the star to add it to your watch list. It'll trigger the snack bar. So, you know, just small touches like this for folks who aren't in Figma every day like we are, or you want to kind of encourage and nudge folks as they're reviewing your file to, to do certain things. Yeah. And shout out to my friend, Charlie. This is actually her font called Grayscale, which uh, you can go and buy over on her website. I use it for all these kind of like annotations and little side notes and things. Love it. So shout out to Charlie. I also created the design documentation for the snack bars as well. Well, here's a little look at that. Very similar to how the marketing cards are organized too. Again, you know, showing here like the success message can go all the way up to this point, but there should be, I think this is eight or 16, eight pixel gap, yeah, between the two. So yeah, just really outlining how the elements should be built. Again, usage things to use it for, things to not use it for, behavior. Uh, I don't know what happened to the screenshots I had here. I don't know if they're even here, but anyway, I had some examples here of like visual examples of do's and don'ts, which are not there for some reason, but here's uh, also the sort of examples as well that I think are always like really important to include for the team. Okay, and then the modals here. So I've got the single modal and the multi-step modal and examples of that as well. And then we were talking a little bit about like for the multimodals, how this would interact. Like, do we want it to auto scroll to the next like step, I guess, or next screen? There's going to be a bit too much engineering left for like V1. So for V1, it would not auto advance. You would have to like tap or like swipe to get to the next screen. But eventually, you know, it would be nice if it auto fills and auto scrolls to the next uh, screen as well. And a bit of a note here on animation as well. I think I ended up making a prototype for this. Um, maybe it's not here, but again, wanting to make sure that you're really clear with your engineers on how things are animating and interacting because otherwise they're going to make it up or they're going to ask you a lot of questions. So you want to be prepared. Okay. Now I'm actually going to use these components uh, and pull them in to the designs that I have here. So you can see like how you would interact with them if you were say, you know, a designer on this team and wanting to bring in some of these components. So I'm going to search for the marketing card and ignore my like little asset library over here. There's like duplicates of components and everything because this was a working file but I know that this is the correct one and I'm going to drop it in here. Okay so it's automatically the small one which is great. I will keep it as this color and because we're designing for light mode I'm going to switch it to light mode. Then I'm going to duplicate it. Let's do like a different color and then the third one which is going off the screen we'll do a different color there as well and then we can replace this text. Oh I cannot replace this text because I don't have the font. Never mind I don't have the font on me right now but if I had been more organized I would have made sure I had access to the font you know what I mean just press enter type into the text box you could replace it with your own headline and then you know teams could also swap out the icon if it was linking out of app and also replace the imagery as well reason that I can't do that right now is because I don't have access to the design system file anymore where I could then switch out those assets so they're kind of like hard-coded into this component but in the real component for the team, they can easily switch out those assets. All right, now let's do a marketing card up here and let's make this full width. Let's make this one papaya and switch it to light mode. Nice. And then for the third one, let's do the banner. I know that it is this one. That is not where I want it. I want it right here. Cool. And then let's maybe make this one an alert, add a title make it dismissible and why not? Let's like add a CTA as well. So you can see how easy and quick that was, right? Like for the team to just like super easy, like turn things on and off, configure it how they want it to be. Figma components are really amazing. They've come such a long way. And lastly, let's do the snack bar. Okay, let's pop it. Oh man, I find find it so hard to use when you don't want something to like go into the auto layout. I'm sure that there's a way to fix this that I just don't know about. Oh my gosh. This is what I usually do. I'm like, okay, how do I get it like to the top? There we go. Okay. All right. Snack bar. Let's get it into place. Should be 16, 16 on each side. Do eight from the bottom. 
Cool, and then if you wanted to switch this out to the alert, just switch it out there, super, super easy. So yeah, that's just a little demo of like how, you know, the designers on the team would interact with these components, just really easily drag and drop them into their screens as they're working on them, configure it how they like, move on and be good to go. So we didn't have this before and this has been like such a time saver, I think, for the whole team. And for me, it has been a really interesting learning experience because I had not worked on design systems or created components before this project. So a lot of learnings were done here, learning how to do like variants and different like properties and like these little toggles for the components was was really awesome and like a good good learning opportunity for me. Okay, and that pretty much wraps up this two part series. Thank you so much for tuning in, for watching this. If you found this helpful, let me know below. And if you think a friend would find this helpful, share it with them. You know, sharing is caring and it goes a really, really long way and makes a really big difference for a small creator like me. So hopefully you learned something. If you want to see something in particular on the channel in the future, you can let me know in the comments and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.